Well, good Saturday to you, chat. It is finally here, the interview with David Stay, the man himself. The preeminent actor who played Mandar on the 80s show Photon. Now, I know a lot of people might not be familiar with this show. We covered it quite a bit over at Stream Me when that was still a thing, before it uh, inevitably shut down. But to bring people back up to speed, to understand what you're about to get into, Photon was an 80s television show that in an alternate universe would have been huge, but for some reason was overlooked. Imagine Power Rangers, Super Sentai, a little bit ahead of its time coming over to America. Elaborate costumes, green screen effects up the ass, lots and lots of crazy storylines and characters. It's pretty, it's pretty great stuff. Photon was put together for a 26 episode run by a company that made the laser tag game. And to give you an idea of what that is, because some of you may be millennials and have no idea what laser tag is, I'll, uh, I'll give you a quick little preview. You have been chosen to be the ultimate laser warrior. First, choose wisely. Choose the laser that really works together. It scores on the helmet, scores between phasers. And for whatever reason, the guy, the company that made that product, that had photon centers around the country, that made the game for kids to pick up and pester their parents for, decided, you know what will go great with this? A Japanese-made television show featuring my product and it is a a hidden treasure and so David has graciously uh, agreed to come on and talk about his time on the show what it was like behind the scenes uh, his experience as an independent filmmaker and a host of other things so I will bring him in he's expecting me to to call him in here hopefully we don't have any technical issues and I don't make a giant ass of myself so let's find out how this is going to go Give me one moment chat to pull him in Hello. Hello. Yeah, hello, everybody. Uh, well, David, you are live on stream with me now. Hey, what's going on, my brother? Well, we're we're finally here after multiple delays. We're finally here. I've finally got the time nailed down, and we can talk about everything photon related, your career, and just a, a whole host of things. Fantastic. Well, good. Uh, let's start it off with. Um, if you want to kind of give people, I, I guess, a little bit of background about how you got into the show, um, you know, right. how you started on it, essentially. Sure. Yeah. Let's let's start by setting the record straight. Okay. Okay. Go for it. All right. Don't don't you think I didn't listen to more of your your show about David Stay and Mandar? Okay. <laughs> you heard so, a few of those streams, did you? Oh, well, you know, I was going to be on today, so I'm going to do a little. So listen, number one, I need the guy's name and the address. Okay. <laughs> that said anything about me being in some soft core gay porno. Number one, <laughs> yeah. okay. I need. I need. I'm telling you, man. You email me his name and address. I, and I, I will get me, that to you. Yes. Yeah, you get that to me. You got me fucking Parsifal. You got me as a pedophile. I'm <laughs> fucking Bartley. Wait, let me ask you this question: What is Medicare? What is it? I know a pedicure is manicure. What is what is Medicare? What do you trim fucking guys? <laughs> what well, is that? Med Medicare okay. is uh, Medicare is a spin on mediocre, which, uh, which uh, misspelling of it. Well, yeah, you know, so I was gonna, I was gonna get into it. I was gonna get into the, because uh, uh, I looked over your IMDb page and I looked at uh, the roles that you had played on your website, davidstay.com, and I didn't, I didn't find softcore gay porn, but somebody was uh, pretty adamant that you had been in that. So you're saying that is, uh, that is fake news. Uh, it's fake news. It was. Uh... It was called, you mentioned it, it was called uh, Sex Something, um, it wasn't a gay porno. It was one of those soft core shit, man. Hey, you pay me a thousand bucks, I'll be on the set for a day. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I hear you. You know, I'm not gay, but $20 is $20. See, that's what it was called, Undercover Sexy. <laughs> it's Undercover what? Undercover Sexy, I think that's what it was called. I gotcha. What, uh, what role did you play in that? I played the guy, uh, he's a, a magazine publisher, and his models are being killed. So I, I play them, they come to me, they think I'm killing them. I played a real douchey guy. It was easy. It was typecasting. <laughs> I gotcha. So <laughs> now, now that you've blown my ass out of the water, 
Uh, <laughs> do you want to introduce people to kind of how you got into this? Because I, I think I read an interview or uh, it might have been something that you had written up talking about how you kind of got into the show. Um, was it that uh, you, you were with a friend who went overseas or somebody was looking into it and then you somehow tagged along and got picked up on it? Or am I... No, right, yeah, I'll slam it down real quick. Sure. My friend James isn't like my brother. I am not, he's not my brother anymore. I grew up with him from a little kid. And uh, he calls me one day. He studied Japanese in college. And he calls me one day. He had a fascination with Japan. Hey, I'm going to Japan. You want to go? And I'm 22 years old. And I said, what are you talking about? You're going to go to Japan. What, are you crazy? I want to speak Japanese. I nothing. And then I heard, I read in the trade papers. There's something going on. And I don't know. I woke up one morning. I said, you know what? What the fuck? I'm going to go to Japan. Why not? I get off the plane in Japan with $500 in my pocket. And I don't know anything about this show, nothing. I just read something. And uh, I don't know. Three weeks later, I'm the first American bartender in the Hard Rock Cafe in Japan. And uh, that was a scene. And I get this. I find a manager, Leo, Filipino guy. And he says, yeah, I know of this casting. And that's how it all started. So I, went, I actually auditioned for Bodie Lee. And the guy, he says, well, can you be mean? I said, well, you mean mean? Just be mean. He says, just improv it. So I went off the rails. And uh, two days later, I get a phone call. Hey, you didn't get, you're not Bodie Lee. You're going to be Mandar. And the interesting thing about Mandar is originally in the script, the guy with the forearm, that was the lead bad guy until they got the first dailies and they changed the whole script, all Mandar. Because they liked him better than the uh, generic pupper, or puppet monster, right? They thought he, yeah, he had I, more presence. Sure, good decision. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, because, I mean, Mandar does stand out. I mean, that's one of the things when we're watching it over on Stream Me, uh, people really liked the character because it was so mm. over the fucking top. Uh, that's, I think, what really appealed to people. Now, I'll tell you something very funny. Now, I'll tell you this. I think I told you already when we spoke. All the voices were voiced over because everyone had different accents. So they didn't like that. So they voiced, so they voiced over the whole thing. And I hated my voice. I hated the guy that was doing my voice. I don't know which episode it is. But, you know, I died 25 times in 26 episodes. So in the episode, there's one episode and I'm dying and I actually scream out. I'm going to kill the motherfucker that's doing my voice. <laughs> of course, they just cover that over with a scream. Oh, yeah, I'm sure the dubbing want, department loved I want, it. I, I knew he would hear it. <laughs> I, know that, I knew the guy doing my voice would hear it. Now, this show, when it was put together, and I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit, too. I mean, you guys did a 26-episode run on this. Um, hmm. And... Uh, it seems like, I mean, we're, I've got pictures kind of up on screen for people to look at. They can see, you know, there are a lot of cast people, a lot of makeup and effects and stuff. It Where do I go to the page, man, while I'm on with you? Oh, if you, if you, can, if you want to see it, uh, you can just go to Mr. Medicare on YouTube, and you'll, you'll see yeah. the pictures that are up. Uh, but I, 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 I think one of the things that kind of struck me, it looked like there was so much money put into this, so much time put into this. Um, what was the decision? Why did they not pick it up for more than one season? Why cut it off after just the first 26 runs or 26 episode run? Well, George, the guy who opened up the, 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 the photon show wasn't designed to sell product. It was designed to sell the laser tag centers. So that guy in Texas who created photon, the laser tag center, which still goes on today. As a matter of fact, Lori, uh, you know, from photonforever.com who built that whole site, uh, she goes all over the country playing photon. Fantastic what she does. But what happened was, is uh, it, it was all money's coming out of this guy's pocket, and he it was it was the, the final hour. We were all in the studio waiting for the phone call from the U.S. Because we sat here as well, Los Angeles and Tokyo, and we were all sitting in the studio waiting to see if we we're going to be picked up for another twenty-six episodes. And the call came and. Jim Carrington, the uh, American producer, he, uh, he said, nope, they, they, they don't have the budget for it. You know what really fascinating me about that budget? What's that? Is, is when you watch the laser shots, okay, this, they put the freaking money into everything. But when you watch the laser sh gun shots, it, it was like they're going everywhere. 
and they're pointing in the wrong direction. And I said, why? Why is this? Like the very first episode, he's jumping around. Later, the shots are coming from all over the place when the characters are in front of him. It was just continuity shit. I mean, I'm just a little uh, OCD with a lot of things. But I have a good OCD. Uh, some people in chat are saying we're having some mic issues. Uh, I'm, I'm running this, I'm rooting this through Skype. We're doing it via phone call, so I'm not sure if that might be playing some issues on it. I apologize, chat, if you're having issues. I'll try to, if it's coming in too low, tell me, and I'll try to boost them up. Okay. Uh, I'm watching the stream. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so you, you, you did your, your, your 26 run episodes. Uh, you know, you worked on the show. They come in, they tell you, we're not picking it up for another season. Like, at, yeah. at this point, were you committed to doing acting and stuff? Or did you got you, you know, you kind of got a taste of I, it? I was, I was the only actor on the show. I was the only actor. All the other cats never did anything. Loretta, I sent you, I sent you an, an email. Did you see Loretta in, in Europe? Uh, no, I don't, I don't know if I saw that one. I know we had a, a, a bit of a correspondence, but I think I've missed a few of the emails. Well, yeah, well, Loretta was a singer, and the rest of them were, uh, Chris was an army brat. Uh, Graham, Lord Bathen, was an Australian cat that was acting in Japan. And, but nobody was an actor except for me. I was the only one that was an actor my whole life, 12 years old. And so did you decide to stay in Japan after this? Did you just leave right away? What was your, what was your plan after the show didn't get picked up? Well, I don't have many regrets in my life, okay? But my producer, Mac Masamori in Japan, he wanted me, put it this way, when you're, and I know much better now. But back in the day, I didn't want to be famous in Japan. I want to be famous in my home, right? But Mac Masamori said to me, he says, look, you stay here. Go to school. Like, be fluent in Japanese. I speak Japanese, but just like shoot the shit at Japanese. You know what I mean? You want, you want to give, and, us a, uh, give, give us a little? I want to hear some Japanese with that accent. Can you give us something? All right. I have, I have no idea what that means, but I like, I like the accent kicking in behind it. I wanted to, well, let me tell you something very important about the accent. My friend James, who studied Jap Jap Japanese in Japan, I would actually have to translate for him because he learned Japanese from this English cat. So you can't say, uh, like, Akira, which is how he would speak Japanese. I'd say exactly what I just said, except the way he would say it. I would actually translate for him because I learned my Japanese from the Japanese. I didn't speak a word of Japanese when I got there. The interesting thing is I was there for like three months, right? And I still didn't speak a word of Japanese. I knew good morning and hello. Konnichiwa and uh, good morning is very easy. It's Ohio, like the States. That's good morning in Japanese, Ohio. And I realized, they said, you know what? Because in Japan, you go places, you don't have to speak Japanese. But my town, Shimokitazawa, there are no English, zero English. And I thought about it after a couple of months there. I said, you know what? I live here. So I, I made a commitment, and I found a place called Yotaro. Yotaro is like a little tiny restaurant thing. Uh, it's, it's a master and mama. You can call them master and mama with their husband and wife. These are my family, these people. I have a lot of family in Japan now. And, and that's how, that I, I made a choice to just stay in my town. And I would sit there and eat and drink. They didn't speak a word of English. I didn't speak any Japanese. We'd laugh our asses off all night. And all said and done, I'm speaking Japanese. So I learned from them. You learned it the natural way, just daily, day-to-day uh, -day kind of stuff, having to learn it. Right. Because if you don't have the accent to it, like doshtano, you don't say doshtano, it's doshtano, which is, you know, what is it? Doshtano. Uh, bakero, crazy. You don't say bakero. Yeah, I, I, I speak zero Japanese. I couldn't, <laughs> aside from like a one or two things you hear in anime, I, I know none of it. Boy, what are you going to do? Well, very true. So after the show, it, like, it kind of explain to us because I, I looked over the credits on the stuff that you've done. I mean, you've 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 worked on set. You've you've been in other shows. Um, 
but you also got into like independent filmmaking and I wanted to talk about Sphere of the Lycanthrope which was your your project your film yeah did you watch it no no I did not get a chance to watch it uh, the P.O. Box thing pumped, I, I know I know I, I'm telling you man they're fucking me up my ass and there's nothing I can do about it they, they, I don't they, play, they hey ream them they, Green him. They, 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 they do not like me after our little fallout with the uh, postal service, and uh, I, they're just fucking with me at this point. Oh, uh, you mean you don't even have it? No, I don't even fucking have it. That's why I haven't been able what to the watch it. Fucker? I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they're fucking me in my ass for the the sheer pleasure of it. All right, all right, all all uh, Medicurist fans, you got to get on the postal service. Uh, well, you got to be kidding me, man. No, I'm not. I told, not you, I told you. I told you. Right, somebody just said not impressed. Who just wrote that? <laughs> well, I've got. Uh, well, I'm playing uh, your trailer. I do have the trailer running. I don't have the audio on it, so we can hear you. But uh, the. Well, no, the I can't do I'm watching it. Yeah, I'm watching the trailer to Sphere of the Legend Pro. Yep, yep, right up on screen. Uh, now, I mean, this is a project you worked on for years. Uh, do you want to kind of tell people a little bit about it? Like, what started you being interested in making the film? How long you worked on it? What was the motivation? Sure, sure, okay. No, the sphere of the lichen drop. There's a, a movie in making the movie. This is what occurred. I was making, I was always making movies since I was like 18 years old with my family, making movies. Me and my, my partner with the sphere of the lichen, Keith Grenning, we would make little short, fucking stupid things, right? I was really serious about, you know, making quality out of nothing. And he tells me one day, he went to Mount Vernon High School, and like the theater and movie uh, teacher guy, uh, he was talking to him and telling him, and, he, and he, Bob Kettler, the guy you see in the very beginning of the movie, you know, take the transfer, John, just take the transfer, that guy. He, he, Keith tells me this guy, you know, he'll give us the school to shoot something in. I, so I'm thinking about like a short five-minute film. Anyway, we go to dinner. We take Bob Kettler out to dinner, and we talk about. And this guy is gung ho. Showing here, I can do a whole movie. Now I don't have anything. I have no script. I have nothing. No, no clue. No idea. All I know is a high school and kids, right? So this guy's. Good. I said, well, how many days can we have the school? Like after hours, weekends. This is, I don't know, five, six days, like a weekend, and after hours, five days, right? Six days. I think we go there for like over a week. So now I'm working, I'm, I'm a bodyguard for the district attorney's office in Brooklyn, New York. And all I, I don't even know how I came up with the idea. It kind of came from, I can't, you know, I can't give a spoiler on this, but I just came, I had a school, I'm going to kill kids. All right. <laughs> Your basic kind of story. Thing. Yeah. Basic script. <laughs> right. So in, in six months, I in my car from, from 7 p.m. till 7 a.m. I wrote it, I cast it, I scheduled it. I did it all in my freaking car in Brooklyn outside of you know, the family that was, had death threats with the, with the Daily News strike. That's it. And then we just freaking did it. And it happened. And it was freaking unbelievable. Dude, you got it. I don't even want to talk about it. We got to do this again after you've seen the movie. There's somebody who died on the set. You got to see the freaking movie first. Did you say somebody almost died on the set? Yeah, I almost died on the set. <laughs> How the fuck did that happen? I swallowed my fang. You see it all life. Oh, I was peeing blood, man. What I, what I went through. These, these, I mean, I you got to see it, Brad. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Well, this, I the, can the, we discuss it if you you have no clue. Right. Well, the plot of the movie is you're you're a substitute teacher. You're a teacher that transfers in and somehow becomes a werewolf, so after you got put in makeup, you swallowed, you swallowed your fangs and choked on them? Yeah, I swallowed, yeah. They had the hind legs, they were all around me. They thought I was acting. Oh, you gotta see it. It's, it well, one thing, look, I'm a big fan of uh, the outtakes, bloopers, okay? I mean, I, I want to see outtakes on Schindler's lips. All right? I love outtakes. So, at the end of the film, throughout the credits, you got all the shit that went down. <clears throat> And I'm very proud. I'm very proud of somebody in my film. And whoever gets it, I'm telling you, the, the guy in the end, the very last brood member, who says, um, your prophecy has come to life, whatever, and then he drops dead. Uh, he just was in an academy. Craig DeFrancia, 
this freaking kid. I love this guy. I've known him all these years. He was in Green Card or Green Book. What's the movie that just won the Academy Award? The black guy? Oh, I have no idea. Well, it's either Green Book or Green Card. Anyway, he was just in the Academy Award when I saw him. I saw him on the red carpet holding me. He didn't get the Academy Award, but he was part of the whole cast, yeah, so he got to hold these guys. Oh, it's fantastic. I'm proud of him. Now, when you when you gave your acceptance, best you horror film. I gotta equalize the audio on that. Um, and I talked to you about this earlier too, because you didn't expect to win when you got this award. No. Like you went, you went up, you went up unprepared for this. Say that again. I, I said you said that you were you weren't expecting to win. It wasn't like you had a prepared speech. You didn't think that you were going to be called up to stage for the sphere of the lycanthrope. No, I had nothing. No way. No way. If you look at the front of the stage, you got Ron Perlman there. You got uh, uh, Jim, Tim Coates sitting right there. Hey, I'm up against half a million dollar films, right? If it wasn't for Ford Austin, when he yelled it out, he snapped me out of it. I was literally a deer in headlights. I don't even remember getting to the stage. And if you listen closely, when he says, see the light, you hear bam. And I just slammed the table. I was just like, oh, no way. Oh, there I am. There I am. I'm freaking out, man. I'm, <laughs> the, I'm getting up there right now. I'm like, what the fuck? The fuck up? I'm a uh, maximum fatty. Well, yeah, you were going up against films that had a budget. I mean, didn't you say that you made this on ten thousand dollars compared to the other $10, guys? Ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that 4, had a half a million. Ten thousand. Well, it was compared to uh, Paranormal Activity, right? So these cats, hey, you give me ten grand and shoot a film in an apartment, I can do that. And the reason it was compared is because my film, $10,000, one freaking cat for the most part, all right? Everything. Me and Keith. But I was, a, uh, anyway, the, the, there's over 100 people in my film. There's seven locations. There's scenes shot in freaking Italy for 10 Gs. That, that's guerrilla filmmaking, Pally. Well, and I, I think this leads us into uh, some of the more interesting stuff. Because, I mean, we talked a little bit about it uh, when I called you up last time. Uh, which were your thoughts on Hollywood, kind of like the filmmaking industry and stuff, and what your stance is on it. Uh, do you want to kind of yeah. lay Do you want to kind of lay it out for people to give, I guess, your perspective on it? All right. I'll give you all fair warning right now. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna to lose your minds, some of you. Okay? Listen. Do not look up to any A-list celebrity. They're all fucking demons. I give you my word. I'm telling you this right now. I've been a student of numerology and symbolism for a very long time. I'm a, I'm a huge truth seeker. That's my mission in life. Because I know everything you've been told is a hot damn lie. And all your, most of your freaking actresses you guys jack off to, they're guys. They're dudes. They're all dudes. What do you think this whole LGBT, I don't know who the fuck I am society came from, huh? Who do you think? You think a group of people hot damn got together and the news media worldwide said, well, let's pick this up? You got to wake your asses up, man. It came from your government. Everything you get is from your government, all right? Just, uh, just you got to use your logical mind, man. LGBTQ. Look. Do you understand there are 63 fucking genders acknowledged, recognized? Oh, yeah. That's uh, every, every flavor of the rainbow. No, I know what you mean about that. Yeah. You know what? This is what makes you, you, the majority of you fucking sheep. Dumb as shit. Now, Lex, listen. I might use that. I use that a lot. Dumb as shit. If I say you're dumb as shit, I don't mean in general. I just mean in, in <laughs> specifically. In the, in the <laughs> I said just specifically, right? <laughs> Dumb as shit. Yeah. No, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Well, no. Just in the subject. If if we're, we're an indifference on the subject I'm talking about, like we're talking about now, I'm not saying you're dumb as shit as a human. I'm just saying you're dumb as shit in this department. I'm gonna look. My job is to wake people the fuck up. All right. Oh, you got an audience that wants to be woken up. Uh, chat's going fucking wild right now. I mean, they, they want to hear this behind-the-scenes shit. They want to hear somebody's take on Hollywood and just, you know, what, what goes on behind the scenes and shit like that. All uh, right, let me explain something to you. You want to be an A-lister, 
You didn't name one of them. Look, I'll give you a perfect example of symbolism. I want you all to think of your favorite actor, your big drug, your, the rock, fucking Bruce Willis. You name any fucking one of them. And I guarantee they've been in a fucking dress. Every <laughs> single one has been in a hot damn dress. So, so that's your job. You, you see, you think they make any decisions, these people? They're all fucking puppets. Most of all the women. Look at them all. Julia Roberts is a fucking dude. George, Scarlett Johansson, dude. You're Jennifer Lawrence, you guys jerking off to her all the time. You're jerking off to a hot damn dude. Do you understand? It's, it's fucking hot damn sum in the city. All right. I got to take a deep breath because I get very passionate about this well, shit. That, that's what people want to hear, man. They want to hear that passion. I mean, when you're, when you're, are, are you saying that a lot of these female actresses? I mean, you mean it, right? They're they are literally dudes in dresses. No, yeah, that's the that's that's the game. See, you have to work. You want to be in the twenty million dollar club? If I told you what you had to do, your 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 skin would crawl. And I want you to think of the worst shit you can think about, including feces. Look, let me tell you something. All those, the guys that are guys, don't most a lot of the guys are girls. You fucking, you know, got to wake up, man. Wait, when you say feces, like I'm picturing Scarlett Johansson with an erection eating shit. Is that what we're talking about? Like shit play? Oh, easy, 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 easily. Uh, that's the, uh, look, that's what you have to do. This is the Illuminati. They run it all. It's a TV show. You're fucking government. This is what I get crazy about. It's when I uh, on Facebook, okay? All these people with their political shit and Trump and this, that. You think Trump is fucking real? You people think you have a fucking vote? You dumb as shit. This is what I mean when I use that. When I use that fucking catchphrase I use all the time. You gotta understand? It's a TV fucking show. You live in the fucking matrix, kids. Yes, you do. You don't know anything but what you've been fucking told. Okay? And that's not a theory. That's a fucking fact. Well, you think uh, you've been uh, to the fucking moon? You're out your mind. A, a lot of people, a lot of people when it comes to Hollywood, right, uh, get the feeling that their agenda is being pushed in films. Do you think that, uh, that Hollywood pushes agendas? Do you think that they're trying to accomplish a specific goal? Okay. This is not for now. Okay. Very important, Jim, my friend. There are things I theorize about. There are things I philosophize about. There are my belief systems. And then there's what I fucking know. Everything that is broadcast to the masses. Where do you think? That, do you think they say, you know how many people die every fucking day? A what, lot. what show? What, what do they produce? But they're going to tell you what they want to tell you. You think those newscasters are any journalists whatsoever? They're fucking puppets. They're told what to say. And what they're saying is said all across the country. The exact same terminology they're using. Anything they want to push on the masses, they can. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. And they know you're all dumb as shit. That's the fucking problem. They know you're all dumb as shit. Look at the Notre Dame. Look at that. That's stone. Why don't you take a blowtorch to a fucking rock and see if it catches on fire, you dumb fuck? Go ahead. I dare you. You're talking about the cathedral Somebody, that just burned down, the Notre, uh, Notre Dame Cathedral. Yeah, oh, every yeah. time, anything you see, massive, is a fucking show. It's not fucking real. It's design. It's all by hot damn. What is, look, look, again, please, people, all I want you to do is use your logical mind. Open your pineal gland, okay? The human race has been raped of its fucking logic, okay? You, you, you don't even believe your two lying God-blessed eyes in your head, man. Okay? And it's in, look, it's in plain sight. But you're too busy looking at your fucking phone. That's what they want. They want your heads down. You're all hot damn zombies now, man. You know what the future's going to be for this fucking planet? They want, about, they want people yeah. tuned out and addicted, right? They just want to feed them a message. The, the thing I think Chat's wondering about, I mean, he touched on it a little bit when he said Illuminati, but uh, who's in control? Like, who, uh, Somebody's directing Hollywood to do this, right? So who is it? Okay. You have the Illuminati, all right? Now, look, this is all just, I'm not basing these in line, but the Illuminati is a fact. This is what runs the country. Why do you have a fucking hot damn pyramid on your dollar bill? Hey, you know, think about it. Got the all-seeing eye. Think about, look, 
This is why I want you to get by symbolism, okay? And I want you to see how you go up in ranks. I don't know the rankage, okay? But we're talking about your celebrities. This is what you're going to see. I told you already, you'll see every fucking guy in the dress. Every one of them. Let me tell you something. You don't think one of those fucking actors would say, fuck you, man, I'm not wearing a fucking dress for this scene. Don't you think one of them might? Not just one. Bruce Willis said, well, you out your mind. I'm fucking diehard. I don't put on a fucking dress. Oh, no, you got to. See, he has no stay. <laughs> he puts on the fuck, and I hung with Bruce Willis. But they're all in it. You want to be in it. It's just, you look, these are the symbols I want you to look at from all your fucking celebrities. They always put in their hand over their eyes. That's the one eye symbol. That's your bowing down to Satan. You're in the club, okay? I want you to see them all in fucking bathtubs. Every one of your fucking MTV fucking people, look, they're all in fucking bathtubs. They'll be in milk. They'll be in blood. They'll be. Don't you think one producer of a music video would say, hey, well, you know, Miley Cyrus is just in the bathtub. Maybe we should go another direction. Don't you think that logical thinking? No, they're all in a fucking bathtub. Now, I, 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 I got to say, it's, it's hard for me to picture somebody like, I mean, I've watched a lot of like 80s films and shit, 90s films, the action shit. Like the, the thought of Bruce Willis in a dress, I mean, is it some weird kind of fucking sex cult? Is it like a Weinstein thing going on in Hollywood where they're making everybody no, do no, degenerate no. shit? You get, no, Jim, you get me wrong. No, they have to be in a dress in public. Saturday Night Live, a movie, a TV show. They all got to be in a fucking dress eventually. I get it. I no, get I'm it. Not they got to the, they gotta toe the line. I see what you're saying. Well, this is, this is the rules. You want to be part of the family? Marina Abramovich, that's the biggest witch of them all. Well, they, they're the, what are they called, soul-eating parties or fucking bloodletting parties. Oh, yeah, the spirit and, cooking. Yeah. Yeah, spirit cooking. Well, well, do me a favor, humans. Why don't you just dig a little deeper on your own? And why don't you look into spirit fucking cooking? And look what your, your, your idols are up to. They laugh at you. You know, when they're all, and there's another thing. This is everyone you'll see them do. They'll cover their eyes, okay? That's the all-seeing eye. They'll put the shish, shish symbol, you know, the finger over the lips. That's the secret. When they all sticking their tongue out at you, they're mocking you. You gotta fucking wake up. Well, they're I, mocking I, I, you. I remember Terry Crews, you know who that is, the, the guy that did all the deodorant commercials, uh, the black dude, real muscular. He came out recently with a story saying that a Hollywood exec uh, kept pestering him for sex, would, like, feel him up, do really weird, bizarre shit. Uh, and he felt like he couldn't say anything because he was worried he'd lose his ability to act or do anything. I mean, is that is that typical in the scene where you've got these kind of perverts up top that do whatever Bro, whatever they want? James, listen, man, no. it's This is a show. Bill Cosby was a sacrifice. Fucking... The Harvey Weinstein, the sacrifice, it's the script. These people are, you think Bill Cosby's going to go to jail? You think O.J. Simpson was in fucking jail? You think Mike Tyson was in jail? No, they're not, ever. They're just not. It's a fucking TV show. Hence, you're in the fucking Matrix. I'm telling you this shit, man, and all you got to do is break it down. Want to talk about slavery? Want to talk about what a sham that is? Eh. Hey, 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 go for it. You got the platform. Whatever you want to talk about, audience is listening, man. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Hey, uh, hey, if, in for a penny, in for a pound. Go for it. Let's discuss. Now, listen, I don't need any shit, all right? And this came from actually a great, you want to see a truther? You want to see a guy who's one of the greatest truthers on this fucking planet right now? You look for mag bitter truth. MBT. This is this guy. He's hilarious, first of all. But you can hear the passion in his voice. And he's, he's the same one. You know, he, I love him because he's fucking me. Except the black guy with, like, I don't know what accent he has. Ah, you gotta wake the fuck up. Yeah, this is him. But this guy breaks it down to me. And I watched this freaking documentary about slavery, all right? Now, this is the narrative they give you. This is what your history gives you. All you got to do is, and I just got into history a little, uh, pretty recently, all right? But I'm digging deep back. And things don't make sense, man. Really, a lot of shit doesn't make sense. Hey, I can prove to you it's a TV show. What's, what's not lining <laughs> up for you? When, oh, you're talking about, like, uh, American history with slavery. Like, what, what about it doesn't make sense to you? Or what do you think's being, I guess, like, portrayed wrongly? 
it's it's a lot of visuals. We, we we can discuss the reset if you'd like. We'll do it again, and I'll have all visuals for you. I mean, I'll send you the visual because you have to look at it. It has to be seen, to be understood. I got, right? I got you. That's that's fair uh, enough. Uh, yeah, that is very. I can't. I can't speak it. I, I can't narrate it properly to see it understand. But I'll tell you about the slavery thing. Okay. So this is the story. This is the story they give you with slavery. They actually built these ships specifically. And they took 12 million freaking jungle people, Africans, women out of the jungle, right? This is the story they give you. Don't give me any flack on this, okay? This is their narrative, what, what, you, what you've been taught. So they build these hot damn ships that can fit like four or 500 people. <laughs> and then one of the narratives is that it sometimes took weeks, if not months, to get these people on the ship. Now, this is crazy already. Then they tell you they segregated the men and the women and the children in the middle. All right? Now, you're talking four or 500 savages, okay? And how many crew? I don't know. But I don't care. Pick a number. 100, 10. Who cares? You pick a number. All right? You got these brutal fucking savages from the jungle. All right? This is what they tell you. Now, get this. There are no fucking bathrooms. No bathrooms. All right? They gotta sit and piss themselves. You gotta go, because you understand this ship has no motors, right? You're fucking rowing the ship across the Atlantic Ocean. How long can that fucking take you? Five, six months? So this is the story they're giving you. So they're sitting pissing themselves all day long. Where is the food gonna go for four or five hundred people? Where are you gonna keep that food? Then they start talking about the diseases on the ship. Oh, and how they were tortured. They had, they, they tell you, they, had, they shaved their heads first. They took them of their possessions. What do you think? Logical mind, folks. What possessions? Where are these jungle people? Did they get them out of jungles? Right? This is the narrative they give you. What possessions are you talking about? But this is the story they feed. Then they start talking about all the diseases, polio, scurvy, that took place on the ship because of the, now you got to understand not all of them are going to die, but the fucking people sailing the ship are going to die too. It doesn't, if it doesn't make sense, it's not true. That's what I live by. I and that's the narrative they feed me. I'm not giving it to you. This is what they told me. So right? what, what do you think happened in that period of time then? Like if, if that's, the, if that's what they're feeding people, what do you think, what do you think was going on? Your slaves, your slaves were minimum wage. They were here. They're here. Your slaves, all you got to do, go. You do, I guarantee any, any I'm not going to use African-American, but I'm white, you're black. Any black people listening to this shit right now, I dare you. Go do your family heritage. Go do your family tree. You'll never find a slave in your family. But prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. It's a story. Listen, you're fucking Christopher Columbus. Yeah, I prove it to you right now. Anybody online right now, I want you to plug in on Google, Christopher Columbus images, all right? You can do George Washington. There's only one George Washington. You can do Abraham Lincoln. You only get one. You do Caesar Aurelius. You only get one. Plug in Christopher Columbus. You got like three, four versions of him. It's a fucking cartoon. It's, to, it's designed to divide and fucking conquer people. What do you think slavery is for? The story is to divide and conquer you. That's all they do to you. You watch, the, you watch fucking Donald Trump. You think he's fucking real? Wake your fucking ass up. You think he's, a, <laughs> you think he's like an actor that's just playing the part? It's, they're all actors. None of them make one decision. Put it this way, folks. If you don't get this, your, your last election, you had Hillary Clinton, who's a fucking murdering, horrific human being. The Bill Clinton administration. And again, don't believe a fucking word I say. If you want to wake up, you do your own fucking homework. But 56 some odd people died during the Bill Clinton administration. Okay, that's go rowing up bridges, fucking killing themselves. What the fuck is that? I've been around a long time. I don't know, 56 people in my whole life that passed away in, you know, within four years. Okay? It's a show. Now, you, hey, you, uh, let me just interject here because you're going to get a fucking barbell dropped on my head <laughs> for talking about the shit the Clintons do. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, you know, I enjoyed my YouTube channel. It's been fun up until this point. But I think you just shoved a red pill up the ass of the audience today. 
Oh, what happened? What I do? Oh, it's fine. <laughs> no, we're good. We're good, man. I just want the Clintons to know that I think they're wonderful people, and please don't kill me. <laughs> Continue. Well, I can't read the shit they're writing. It's like, I mean, it's just going based on go back. Oh, no, no. Yeah. Rest, rest in peace, David. Ah, oh, fuck you all. No, no. Chat, chat's liking it. They're, they're, they're digging it. Uh, it's It goes by kind of quick. Um, I could put it in slow mode, but I like people being able to say whatever they want. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, good. Good. I can't pay attention to it anyway. I mean, really, I don't care. Yeah, look, I will tell you something about me. It's very, very, I'm, I'm just a passionate man, okay? And you're not talking to somebody without some credential. I'm a man that read books for 20 freaking years, all right? The way I, look, I was, I wasn't, I'm not going to get in the flat earth. And if you think you're on a spinning ball of water, well, you keep on spinning, okay? That's fine with me. We can do that another time. Or maybe we'll do it today. I don't know where we're going to go. We, hey, we, can, we, want... can, we can jump on that one, too. I mean, we can talk with whatever you want to talk about, man. I'm, I'm giving you the platform. You, you go with whatever subject you feel like talking about. <laughs> Let's finish Hollywood, okay? Sounds good. All right. Hollywood is, look, do not look up to anyone, people. I beg of you, all right? They, they don't give a fuck about you. They, do, they laugh at you, Okay. They, they, I'm, I, I pray for all of you. Don't look, don't look up to anybody, but your family, you know, real. my, my hero in my life was my Annie Ann. You're my hero and my father and my mother. My father, I just buried my father. In October. I love that man. I was the greatest man you ever met. But those are your heroes. People that inspire you. Don't, don't, just please don't, man. I'm telling you, they're all demons. You got it. But even Bob Dylan, how do you think? Get this fish. Okay, let's wake up. Bob Dylan, that fucking guy, most untalented fucking guy that sang fucking gibberish. All he was was pushed onto the masses. And I roll it. Oh, and I'm coming. Oh, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you, think, you think that guy was famous because he was talented? Then listen to the lyrics. He's singing gibberish. He's pushed on the masses. And there's an interview with him with a fucking shaper guy. He tells you, ah, well, you know, I had to sign the deal. What do you mean? Ah, to the man. He tells you. They all fucking tell you, by the way. They even tell you that they're dudes. They tell you they're dudes. Look, I'm done with Hollywood with you guys. You believe whatever you fucking want. But do you think you're all cool people? Every single one of them. My heroes. Okay, in, in, in my mind, Prince and Elvis, all right? I got to tell you, it doesn't matter. I, I, they were talented. I appreciated the talent that, that, they put, that they put upon me, okay? And they were very talented men. Prince, unbelievable, one of the most fascinating artists ever. But I'm sorry to say it. They're in the same boat. They have to do, it's a TV show. See, and they, I just want to finish this with this. Yeah, and then uh, we'll get on to Flat Earth, and I'll wake all you fuckers up. Look, when you got Hillary Clinton and a fucking reality TV show host who's the most obnoxious thing and most obnoxious character they give you, okay? Those are your two best candidates for president of the United States and you think you have a fucking vote? <laughs> well, wake up. Next, next time. Well, this is fascinating to me, man. This is hey, it's fantastic. <laughs> Can I can I ask you how you got onto this? Like, I, I mean, because we we talked a little bit about it before, you know, kind of in the last call and stuff, and the stuff that you're bringing up now. Like, what set you on this path to to viewing Hollywood like you do to the flat Earth stuff? Like, what woke you up to it? All right, I will tell you this. I consider myself very fortunate. I'm gonna I'll give you a little. Uh, I'll fuck all your minds up. But I've been being abducted since I was a kid to this day. Okay, abducted by we're uh, not by who? What are we talking we're about? Not, we're not, I don't, we're not going there. But I believe, this is my belief, okay? Again, I, this is not a fact, this is my belief, all right? I didn't lose my logical thinking. I didn't, my pineal gland didn't shrink up to the size of a dried up mental, okay? When I was in school, I don't know when they first start telling you you live on a ball. So when they tell me I'm living on a ball, I asked everybody, and how old are you then? Oh, eight, nine. I don't know when they started. I have no sense of time, by the way. Zero sense of Everything's one long day in my world, okay? So anyway, all I know is I asked everyone this question. Anybody listen to me? My brother, my parents, and the teachers. I said, well, wait a second. We're at a ball. 
if you had like a, a, a vehicle, a device that could drill through the earth, when you got to the other side, what would happen? You crawl out, you fall out, you fall back, what happens? And the only, the only answer they can give you, well, you can't drill through the earth. That's it. That's the only thing they'll tell you. What, what is the other answer going to be? Let me counter you on this, right? Because uh, we'll get into yeah. the flat other stuff. This will be fun. Um, uh, okay, how do you reconcile, or reconcile, though, the idea of like a flat earth uh, with the amount of governments and corporations that put money to do satellites and shit like that? Wouldn't that mean that there'd have to be a fuck ton of people involved and in never speaking about it and keeping it quiet? Look, uh, let's, let's put some specific questions for us, all right? You have no pictures of the earth. So we know that. That's a fact, okay? Uh, they don't, anybody out there saying, yeah, we have pictures of the earth? No, NASA even tells you there are no photos. It's all composites, number one. Number two, you have the Hubble telescope out there. You see the fucking bullshit images they give you from that fucking telescope that's in outer space. There's no outer space, fuckers. But they're telling you this TV show. So you got this Hubble telescope. Where's one picture of the planet we fucking live on every day? We live and breathe on every day. That we're putting billions of dollars into shit and we got starving fucking children and homeless fucking veterans. Now, wake your asses up, man. Well, yeah, you got, you, you, you got really mad. I mean, when we talked about this before, you got upset because you said that uh, it's not just that, you, you know, you think the earth is flat. You're pissed off specifically at NASA because they're what I mean, what are they doing with the money they get? Right. Look, hey. Yeah, anybody listening, I think we talked about this. I'm, I'm going to fucking put it out there. I'm willing to be, look, my, my goal, if I fulfill my life's goal, I will be fucking assassinated, okay? If there's anybody who knows some fucking attorney with some fucking giant balls, I'll be the puppet. I'll be the, I'll be the figurehead, okay, to sue fucking Nassau in a court of fucking law. They'll answer the questions we, I, I have. We, we can set you up with somebody. I happen to know an attorney who will take this case, Nick Ricada. Um, he's a dude that does YouTube streams. He's a lawyer. I think he'd take your case. Chat, you need to get a hold of Nick and tell him that uh, we should go for this. Like, he does his own uh, late-night streams and stuff. I, I think this would be something right up his alley, to be honest. Let's go. I'm going to stuck in Washington. Now, who do you think is going to come? I mean, is it... When you're talking about like these different things, like Hollywood the way it is, uh, the flat earth stuff, the music industry, is it all like one core organization that's just got their hands in all of this shit that's just that's lying to people completely or are these different groups? Like what's the – I'm trying to get my head around like the structure of like who's okay. pulling let's, the strings and why. This is – this is okay, because you are the sheep. They want you to suffer, number one. They feed off the vibration. Vibrations are very fun. Dude, these people drink fucking blood. They kill fucking babies. This is not bullshit. And they put it in your face. And they mock you. When they, when they fucking make, you know, make jokes about the devil and shit, they all wear, they got to fucking wear the horns. How many people fucking got to do the fucking OK symbol? It's not the OK symbol. Every fuck, find me one fucking hot damn A-list celebrity that's not giving you the OK sign. Sometimes they put it over their eye. The OK sign is not OK. It's 666. That's what it fucking is. Everyone, the fucking Pope is the biggest demon on the fucking planet. <laughs> It's a fucking show. You think AT&T and Verizon and uh, Boost Mobile, you think they're all two separate entities? You're dumb as shit. It's all one and the same. ABC, NBC, CBS. You think they're all different separate entities? No. It's the machine. They're all the fucking, it's all under one fucking blanket. You're, you, you name it. CDS, Ralphs, Albertsons, all your two grocery stores. You think they're into separate entities? No. They give you choices. But the people that make them, you know, there's nobody who owns Ralphs. The government owns it all. So all the people that, okay, so the people that are working for these different corporations, the people that are working with these different organizations, are they, hmm. just, are they just brainwashed like everybody else so they don't see what's going on? Are they in on it? Like how does, what's going on with that, I guess, when you're looking at like the employees and shit? Okay, very, very simple. Look, there's thousands of people work for NASA, right? Your job is to build this shit. That's it, okay? It's need-to-know basis. They're going to feed you just what they feed the masses. 
But you're getting paid. You think you're going to say any shit? No. You're going to say shit. So but the, they're all, they all know. The, the, so I mean, the, there's one the regular, the, that, the, the regular nuts and bolts guy, right, then, like the, 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 the engineer, the designer, that kind of guy, he's just doing the job that he thinks he's doing. So he's not in on it. It's just the, it's the people at the top that are the ones that are deceiving, even the people under them. To tell you the truth, Jim, and now that you asked me this question, I'm thinking about it. Simply, but it was funny because somebody wrote, yeah, I get people, hey, anybody want to Facebook me? It's David Stay, not the fan page. I have no, it's a fan page there. I don't deal with it. I don't do anything with it. But if you want to Facebook me and you want to give me shit, it's perfectly fine with me. I'm cool with it. David, I think mean, people are loving this shit, man. I mean, if you've got, if you've got something to plug where they can follow you and listen to you, now's the time to do it because chat loves this shit. I mean, you'll have interested well, people wanting to hear this. Well, listen, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to do it. I am a procrastinator, but that's a sign of genius, just so you know. That's what I tell um, myself. That's I'm, what I tell myself. <laughs> I can understand that. <laughs> well, you got to, you got to, you know, give me, you know, come on. You don't want to call yourself a procrastinator without knowing that you are. You got to add a little, make yourself feel good about it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm getting exhausted, man. No, no, it's fine. But it's where, good. Where, where can they follow? And let's let's get that out of the way first. Where can they follow you? Set a Facebook page. What's a Facebook page? It's David Stay. Go find me, David Stay. I don't have a page. Don't go to the fan page. Don't friend my fan page. Friend me. And then you've got friend your web, you've got your website too, right? DavidStay.com. DavidStay.com. It's very simple. It's stay like stay here. Want to know a story about my name? Yeah, go ahead. Good story. All right, very good. My name's not David Stay. Okay, I'm not going to give my family name out. But my name is. Well, my name was David Anthony, and then I had a family last name, okay? But my family last name, to me, kind of sounds like a, a skin rash, you know? It, it, it wouldn't flow as an actor, all right? So I went by David Anthony. So it was my name, my first name, my middle name. And then and I went out of the Screen Actors Guild, and I got a gig, uh, but I had to be SAG. I go back to the Screen Actors Guild, and they tell me I can't be David Anthony anymore. You can't have more than one based on uh, finances, you know, getting paid and shit. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's my real name, yeah, but it's already registered the Screen Actors Guild. So um, you can't just pick a name out of the hat, right? Okay? Oh, wait, uh, David, David, is your website okay? People are saying it's down for them. I don't know if that's because a lot of traffic's going for it or if that's because some of the some of the red pills you're dropping has pissed off certain people. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, I'm on the radar anyway. Okay. Fuck them. Fuck them. I'm not afraid of anything, you know? Look, I'm nobody when it comes to this shit. But at my job, and my, look, I live by this, kind of. I live by a lot of... Uh, the mottos and, and philosophies. And one of them is, if, if you don't do something, if you don't do something for the betterment of humankind in your lifetime, you did nothing. If the veil is being lifted, kids and cats and kittens, I'm telling you right now, the bell is being fucking lifted. And this is what I want to get to. I just saw it. Somebody wrote something. You know, 2019, you think people wouldn't be talking about living on a flat earth. That's such an oxy fucking moron. It's 2019. I can't believe anybody believes you on a spinning fucking ball of water. Okay? Look at the glass of water on your fuck. Listen, do me a favor. Just do the fucking math in your head, okay? Very simple. And I'm not going to do I know all the fucking numbers. I'm not going to do them for you. I want you to look it up. I want you to go online. I want you to put how many miles an hour this fucking planet's spinning on. On a tilted ball wobbling, mind you. Let's do that. Then I want you to put in how many miles an hour we going or we're fucking flying around the fucking sun. Put that in. You get those numbers they're going to give you. Then you're going to put in how many miles fucking per hour we're going through the fucking galaxy. And the numbers just become more and more astronomical. Do you know why? Because when you tell a fucking sheep, you're going to give them these fucking numbers. They're going to be like, what the fuck? Okay, whatever you say. All right? And then put all that. Now, I'm no mathematician, but you don't have to be one to figure it out in your logical fucking mind. While all that shit's going on, you only see one side of the hot damn moon. Fuck all. Now, wake your fucking asses up.
So you think that you think they make the you think they make the math and all that shit complicated just to make people confused so they fuck off and just believe it on faith? Yes, of course. Why? Why? They're gonna make it so kooky for you. You just can't look, dudes. You got to go to your work. You got to have your barbecue. You got to fucking watch Judge Judy. You don't give a. And when people ask me what difference does it make whether on a flat earth or a round earth, well, it makes the it means every narrative they've fucking given you is a fucking lie. If they've taken billions upon trillions of dollars from you to go to a fucking movie studio, you think you're on fucking Mars? And where's the picture of Earth from Mars? Where's that? Where's the Hubble telescope? Which gives you these fucking amazing fucking images? It's all make believe, fucking people. Why? This is the one question in, in the court of law. NASA, why does, can't you turn the camera around on the Hubble and give us a picture of where we fucking live? that we should care fucking about? Can't you do that? What would their answer be? They tell you. They fucking tell you we couldn't go to the moon anymore because we lost the technology. You got the fucking lunar module in the fucking museum. Why they lost the fucking in there? What? They lost 35,000 pieces of data from the greatest mission accomplished of humankind. 35 fucking, this is what they tell you, bro. And they laugh at you. They put it right in your fucking face. Hot damn. Now, I got to ask you, I, I got to ask you a question, because a lot of people in chat have been asking this, because uh, you're kind of tuned into this shit. Uh, I mean, this is like your thing. Uh, have you ever listened to people like, what are your like, thoughts on like somebody like David Icke? You, do you know who he is? Yeah, yeah. He's on the TV show. Trust me. He might, he might be on my page, but he, he, look, they manipulate you every fucking which way. All right? Every which way. What's the other guy? Uh, there's like quite a few of them. I, as soon as I start hearing shit, I don't trust you anymore. Because well, again... Yeah, there's, there's, they, David, they there's David Ike who talks about, like, his theory is, like, there's... I, I don't know if he thinks they're demons or aliens, but some kind of, some kind of like, weird reptilian. reptilian shit Rep that's, like, impersonating people. Shapeshifters, all that. Look, put it this way. Nothing is impossible. And what the mainstream gives you, look, but it, I, I'll make this very clear. Back in the day, I, I, there's some of you out there that you, don't, you only had like four channels, five channels plus UHF. Back in the day, when the TV would go off at night, all right? That's my generation. TV would go off at night. Now, you try to tell me, Jim, what was the tagline before you saw the Indian head and the, the, the grid, what was the tagline at the end of the fucking night? Oh, fuck. I, I, I used to have an old dial television, a little black and white uh, shit kicker, you know, back when they were like 15 inches and shit. I mean, I had like 1 through 13 a UHF, but I don't think I ever stayed up to watch what the uh, closeout would be. And every channel would say these exact words. This concludes your daily programming. You get it? They're telling you. So why what would they? Why would they? Know? Why would they do that though? Like that's I. Do you do you think these people are so sick and twisted they get off on the fact that they like to tease people with shit like that, where they're like saying, "Oh, we're programming you," kind of thing? What the hell? You want to hear? You want to see a couple of documentaries? Watch They Live and The Matrix. Look, all you know is what they tell you, pal. Think about it. That this is, you can't tell me I'm crazy for saying that. I'm a very, I'm one of the most sanest human fucking beings I know. All right? But the only thing you fucking know is what they fucking tell you. That you, can't, you can't deny it, right? <laughs> you think all your sports are real? Fuck that. It's all a TV show. It's Rome. Rome never fell. Put that in your pipe. Smoke that. Rome never fell. Do you think it's a, you the think, same the same kind think, of power okay. structure that's just continued? It's the same people at the top, just like some incestuous group that just has been doing this shit for thousands of years. It's there's a reset. We can't get into that. Remember, I told you that's a whole that's a whole other world, man. The reset is a whole other world. Now you you folks are more than welcome to plug it in. The reset. A lot of historians, a lot of great fucking historians out there that show you shit. 
So you bait and every everything that the when I bait like the moon. All right, look, <clears throat> let's do logic with the moon. Okay. Maybe one of you'll just fucking wake up and say, "Holy shit!" Yeah, I wonder, I wonder what that what the answer to that would be. So I'm in the court right now with your buddy, the attorney. Oh, and I got fucking you, you know targets on my fucking head. I'd be proud. All right, if I can get that far. All right. But get this, I, I plug in to the fucking VCR, the fucking TV in front of the court, and I show the footage that they give us. Now all I'm going to show them is the bouncing ass astronaut. Ask me not, okay? I'm just going to show them the bouncing astronaut. I don't know. This is the footage they give me. And now this guy's 250 pounds with all the equipment and everything else. And this, this fucking measly little fucking costume fucking keeps him from the vacuum of space somehow. I don't know. It's fascinating. To NASA, you know, the technology. But you've got to tell me something. When you see this fucking guy bouncing on the moon and you see the dirt under his feet bouncing up and falling down when there's no fucking gravity... The only logical explanation you could give me, if you think I'm dumb as shit, is, oh, well, uh, there's grains of sand on the moon. The moon dust weighs 1,000 pounds of grain. That's it. How is the fucking dust on the moon just dropping like it is in the, in the fucking desert? Huh? Think about it. Watch that dune buggy riding around the fucking moon kicking up dirt. Huh? Just get the fuck out, man. That's your two god bless fucking eyes showing you. I, I'm telling you, man, like, uh, going off the chat's reaction, honest to God, man, uh, if you wanted to do this lawsuit, I, they'd, I almost guarantee you they'd crowdfund it. But like, are, you, are, are, it. are you willing to take that risk? Because, I mean, if what you're saying is true and there's this, I, I don't know, satanic or however you want to describe them, organization that's kind of fucking with people, I mean, if you step into a court of law to try to expose it, I mean, is that why you say that you'd have a target on your back? They'd come after you? No, no, no. I don't care about fucking Hollywood. Look, it's in your fucking face. Do me a favor. Harvard, listen. Again, you want to go logical? Uh, this is how I look at everything. You can't fucking fool me anymore. All right? I'm done. And I'll tell you even how I got into st starting to wake people up. Let me, let me tell you that. All right? This is about six years ago, seven years ago. Now, all my, every woman I've been with, I, I mean, most people in my life always knew. I talk shit, okay? But I didn't really push it on people. You know who's, you know who, I'm going to tell you who set me off. Barack Obama, he set me off. I was getting ready for work, and this one, I don't have a television, but I had a TV, right? My TV's always background noise. I'm getting ready to go to work, all right? And I don't know what he said before. I don't know what he said after. And I cried on this day. I cried this day. All I heard was this. And for all you flat earth, Tin foil hat wearing people. And I looked up, I said, what the fuck did he just say that for? Why the fuck? I'm, I'm standing there in awe that he just said this. And again, I don't know what he said before or after it. I said, why, the, why would he say something like that? And you know what I found out that day, pal? There was actually, I have nothing to do with it. But it was an actual flat earth society. And I, I wasn't fucking alone. Oh, All no, those years, there, I thought there, I was the there, only one. Yeah, there are a lot of people out there that believe it. I mean, it's not like it's some... There, there are multiple websites and forums and shit dedicated <laughs> hey, to it. Something happened in 2012, man. It was a shift. I'm telling you this right now. See, I got to ask you. I, uh, we we have to go over a bunch of subjects, right? Uh, you got the time? You wanna you wanna do some rapid fire questions here? Yeah, whatever you want to do, man. Well, I'm hanging. It's just you, me, and whoever wants to chime in. Uh, well, first I got to say, you gotta you gotta do a fucking podcast or something, because this shit's an entertaining. Like, I mean, people are are like tune in for stuff. I mean, I, I brought up David Ike. What do you, what are your thoughts on somebody like an Alex Jones? What do you think of him? Well, again, it's a show. He's a show. Look. The guy says one thing, and then he turns the other way. So either they told him, look, either we're going to kill you and your family, and, or we're going to fuck you up the ass every week, or you're going to shut your fucking mouth, and you're going to tell people what the, the, you can't. There's anybody who preaches one thing, and then all of a sudden goes the other way, and I don't know these cats, all right? I don't watch them, but I, I, I look, anything mainstream, especially in the truth community, I'm going to see. It's like I don't have a television. You don't think I'm going to know the fucking uh, stone church churches on fire? 
Well, l- 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 let me put it this way, right? Like, um, all right, can you see the chat right now? I, it's, I'm telling you, I can't read that fast. Oh, yeah, man. yeah, I, I know, it, I know, it's going by fast. But let me, and there's a little bit of a delay. But I, I'm telling you, this shit's entertaining, and people would want to listen to it. Chat, if you, well, I'm good. Uh, no, wait, I wait, wait. Uh, chat, if you would watch a podcast or a live stream show done by David, uh, just give us a one. Because I want them to see how, uh, like, people would watch this shit. I want you to understand that people would be tuned into it. So, chat, give me a one if you would watch if he started doing, like, a weekly show. And oh, that's he, cool. Let's see what happens. Yeah, you got to give him a second to kind of catch up, man. Yeah, that's cool. And also, like, uh, if, you, if, you, if you think David's a lunatic, give us an X. <laughs> see, I want to see. I want to see. I'm the sanest motherfucker I know. You, sh- you should be seeing ones I popping up. Well, let's carry on the good show. Yeah, I'm telling you, they're digging it. Um, all right, let, let's uh, let's keep going on then. Um, I mean, you you mentioned the abducted thing. You didn't want to like get into specific details. That's cool. What do you? I mean, if the yeah. if the Earth is flat, okay, if the Earth is flat and space isn't real, I mean, if this is all like some kind of bullshit that people are putting onto the public, right? What mm-hmm. what about the people that are talking about like aliens and shit? I mean, because you brought up the abducted thing, like, it, what is the alien shit then if space isn't real? Yeah, they don't come from out there. They come from way over there. All right? They don't come from out there. There's no space, kids. Look, every... And as far as religion goes, don't get me on that, man. It's Again, it's... it's look, it's all a narrative. It's all designed to divide you and conquer you. What the fuck, man? You think you live in a free country, the United States of America, and they're, this is what they push on you, the masses. They're pushing Islam on you. These fucking people are coming to our country and telling us, hey, and you, you, if you don't know about Islam and what they, their belief system is and what they fucking read every day, you best wake up. Okay? So th- this is what the, the, the man, this is, your, this is your mainstream. This is your fucking TV set. This is your programming. So you're telling me they, they're going to broadcast that Islams want to convert the United States into Muslims, and we're not throwing their fucking asses out. But you're out your mind. you got to be out your mind. I, I hope you've seen the amount of... And the funny thing is you're like, press X if you think I'm uh, uh, you know, uh, crazy or whatever. Even the people that are pressing X are hitting one. <laughs> they want a oh. fucking show from you, man. Yeah, well, they're going to have it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm telling you the interest is there. I, well, the cool thing about the one in the X <laughs> <laughs> is they hate is they hate me and they want to hear more. That's what you are. You're 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 slaves to punishment. Oh, well, that's that's definitely what they are. Well, like when you're talking about over, it, like it, yeah, because like uh, you know, I've watched some David Icke before. I've watched a little bit of Alex Jones before. I, I've seen that kind of stuff. If you're not watching them, like who do you watch? Like what's what's the kind of shit that you watch when you want to hear more about this kind of stuff? It comes to the, this is what happens with me. I'm sorry. What's like that? recently. Yeah. Or recently. And again, no sense of time. Ah, six months, eight months ago. I don't know. I just started. I, I, you, I think it's called UAP. UAP. This guy's a historian. Oh, I'll tell you the best guy. The best guy. Barnabas Nagy. N A G Y. And Barnabas is spelled with all A's. Barnabas Nagy. And what he does. Is all he does is analyze the, the, the photos from the, the most, the only photos they have are from like the 1850s and, and on. And again, you, you'll learn about the reset. Just watch his shit. It's unbelievable, man. So I got all into this historic shit. Put it this way I read, it was at the dentist's office, right? And it's a magazine, and it said that these dogs. Are human hybrids. Now, of course, I got to read this shit, right? What are you talking about dogs are human hybrids? Like, man made them, right? But, to make a long story short, think about it. The dog is the only species on this whole entire planet out of billions of species that would not survive without man. What other animal can grow hair where if it wasn't cut, they'd go blind? Hey. Right? How could a Yorkshire Terrier live in the wild? So it's just, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, but I found it fascinating because it's in plain sight. 
but you just don't see it. You know what I mean? No, and no, I, I hear you, man. Uh, people in chat are wanting me to ask, I, and I, I don't know what your answer would, to this would be, because, I mean, if space isn't isn't real, but they're bringing up Saturn. Uh, do you have any specific thoughts on that? Yes. The, the, okay. <clears throat> so Saturn is your, your five-pointed star. Put it this way. You want to talk about symbolism? I can go into numerology, but it's too complicated for you guys. But there's always everything you see. In your mainstream media, especially everything, you're always going to see the star. The star is like the star in outer space. That's what stars look like. The star is a five-pointed star. It's all the devil. It's all satanic, all right? Everything you see is satanic. It's all brainwashing. Again, you see every celebrity giving you the okay sign. Every fucking one of them. Find me one. I tell you, you can't. You can't find me one celebrity that's never done it. Well, your own poke and the devil horn. You know, that's fucked up shit, man. You think it's rock and roll? No. You got the Pope doing it. That's the devil. Go look up images of the Pope's hall. Go look up those images. Look at that sculpture behind him and tell me that's the most demonic shit you've ever seen in your life. It's, it's, it's public knowledge. Go ahead. Look it up right now. I dare you. The Pope's hall. Images of the Pope's hall. Look at that shit. I, I don't and know. Is that in the Vatican? You mean like hall, like a hallway? Like I, I, I don't know much about hall. the Vatican and shit. It was, now this is what they tell you, built in 1977, there's a 7-7, all right? I'm not going to get into it. This is the Pope's Hall. And if you look at the hall, you look at the sculpture, this is gigantic sculpture behind them. The most demonic, it, look, it's in your face. They mock you. They laugh at you. Is, Put it this way, is, that, is that part of the pleasure they get out of it then? It's not just having the power, it's being able to kind of throw it in your face and mock you. Wake up. It? Wake up. You best believe. There's free energy, man. You don't need to be paying an electric bill. There's free fucking energy. You don't have to be paying for gasoline. You think they put it this way. They tell you they get your fuel from fucking dinosaur bones. Fuck off. You're crazy, man. <laughs> Fossil fuel. <clears throat> you gotta wake up, man. <laughs> So you're talking about, like, Tesla technology? Like, I remember, uh, wasn't he the one that said you could get, like, free energy and shit? You didn't need... Uh... The free energy is... Look, you don't need gasoline, all right? You're slaves. You're all fucking slaves to the system, man. And put it this way. I just posted this the other day. Let me tell you something. The day they demand they put a chip in you, you better take to the fucking streets, Okay? They're demanding that you fucking poison your fucking children with back fucking scenes, man. Putting chemicals in your babies. I, I, I remember hearing the chip shit from back in the 90s where they were saying that they were going to have like a, you know, like a little radio ID that you could put in your hand to use to buy and sell shit. Is that what you're talking about with the, the chipping and stuff? Yeah, chipping you. Oh, trust me. The programming, they're very patient. They're not going to just slam it on you overnight. No, they're going to build it up. You're going to put it in the movies. They're going to put it in everything you fucking see. It's called pre-programming. Getting you ready. Just getting you ready for it. You're going to come take my fucking gun? Yeah, you're going to take it out of my dead hand. That's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. I'm telling you, it just won't happen. They can talk to you about it all the time. They're trying to do it. Why do you think they look? Let's, let's put this into perspective, all right? Trying to wake everybody up here. Let's put this into perspective. Why the fuck? Do these people go into schools and start shooting the shit out of everybody? Schools, why? Is this a trend? Put it this way. If I heard on your mainstream bullshit, which is just going to be a show anyway, right? That a guy went into the IRS office. They just, you know, foreclosed on his house and blew a bunch of people away. I would get it. All right? A guy lost his job after 20 years, went in and blew the boss away. I get it. All right? People snap. Right? But why schools? That's Sandy Hook. What a fucking TV show. You think that's fucking real? Sandy Hook? It's the, the, the bullet holes all through it. It's just. So it, do, you, it, do you think these shootings then, uh, do you think the shootings are fake or do you think that the kids that are pulling them off have been programmed to do it? Oh, MKUltra. Very possibly. But no, mostly a show. 
Okay. Well, I mean, God, you're, well, you're into a lot of these subjects. I browse a board called X, which is like the paranormal board where they talk about a lot of the shit. So you want to get into MK Ultra? I don't know if the audience is familiar with that. And guys, mind control. Right. No, these people. It's, you look, you're all your celebrities, dude. They're not, they're not free to do what they want. It's just not. It's, they have handlers. They do what they're told. That's it. <laughs> they do what they're told. That is all. Well, with, no, like the, with, no, with like the MK Ultra shit, I mean, that was like CIA stuff and mind control. I mean, do you think that's something they're using on a lot of people these days? Or what, like, do you think they do it differently now? What do you think? Well, put it this way. Public knowledge. This is not made up shit. All right? This is from the, they started doing this. In the, this is public knowledge. What they gave you based on documentation. MK Ultra from the 50s. Mind control. So you have... How, how far advanced do you think it is now? They can't just stop you and they, they're going to do it now. Just think about it. Again, this is not the conspiracy theory shit. This is fact. I mean, this is at least based on the narrative they've given you. And let me set everybody straight with conspiracy theorists, all right? Because I'm proud to be one. Seriously. So for those of you that have this taste in your mouth when you hear I'm a conspiracy theorist, let, let's, let's uh, give you a little schooling here. Number one, it was coined by the CIA. Number two, I'm going to give you the definition of it. You question anything we tell you, you're a conspiracy theorist. So I'm hot damn proud to be one because I question everything. I don't believe shit. Uh, put that in your pipe. <laughs> Man, you you're <laughs> my channel is gonna get toasted from this interview. <laughs> uh, is there uh, again, in for a penny, in for a pound? Is there any? Is there one subject? I I mean, more than flat Earth and the Hollywood shit. Like, is there one thing that you really want to talk about, or are those like the two main things that really piss you off when you're when you're talking about this kind of stuff? I I don't care for the deception on the masses, man. It's really I um fucking ready to cry when I think about it. How lied to we all fucking been to. It's just fucked up, man. And I'm telling you, the, the veil is fucking being lifted. In 2012, there was a hot damn shift. I tell you there was. You don't have to believe it. But something happened. Well, a lot of people, I mean, I, I know they call it something silly with the Berenstein Berenstein universe. You ever hear that shit? Uh, the kids book. Yeah, that and had, Mandela effect. Well, yeah, that's yeah. fantastic shit. Fascinating shit. Right, right. Uh, is that kind of what you're talking about? You think like in 2012, right. we had like kind of a shift into like some weird yeah. fucking parallel shit? It was a major fucking shit. Dude, do me a favor, bro. I watch this. I'm a sky watcher. Okay. You want, if you people don't believe in UFOs, and I can't tell you what the fuck they are, if you don't believe in them, you want to see them? Watch the hot damn sky. That's all you got to do. But they don't want you watching the sky, that's for sure. They're fucking poisoning you every day. That's the other thing I don't, I don't get about the sheep, all right? I'm ready to take the streets, man. I'll be first in line. I'd be willing to die if I got two billion people behind me. I'll be the first in line to take it all effect over. You think you need a government? You think, you, you think if there were no police, it would be the wild, wild west, you dumb as shit. Most people, for the most part, are civil. Well, yeah. s well speaking of the sky watching thing, I, what, what's your take on like the uh, uh, chemtrails, contrails, and shit with like cloud seeding and shit with planes? Guy, okay. again, this is why you're all a fucking sleep, man. They tell you what they tell you, guy. You, why don't you take your kid to the doctor and get a hair follicle test? Why don't you do that and see the barium and aluminum mercury in his system? Why don't you do that, huh? And maybe wake your ass up. Yeah, they tell you, though. I'm not making a shit. This is what they tell you is in it. They give you the fucking story. Oh, we're going to do it. They show to the right while they're right. They tell you the sun's 92 million miles away. You got to wake up, man. How can you even tell somebody that? They tell you how big the sun is. How? Oh, who went there? Tell me who went there. Come on, man. Who oh, make fucking belief? But they just told you. They just fucking said, oh, we think the moon's in our solar system. Well, they did is you fucking go. <laughs> it's in your face. They mock you, man. They laugh at you. I'm telling you. It, you, you. Did you not hear that? They just said it a month ago. The moon might be in our solar system. Did you not hear that? that Mainstream media. Wait, said what? 
they said they, we think the moon might be in our solar system. All of a sudden, the moon changed. Did I not read this shit? No, man, I missed that one. Well, it was public. Again, I have no TV set, so I saw it twice. And I'm like, what the? And I'm laughing my ass off. This is your government telling you the moon might be in our solar system. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. How do you lose? I want to go back to it. I want you all to wake up, man. How did the greatest accomplishment of mankind not only lose 35,000 pieces of data of the moon landing, but they also tell you that they taped over it by accident. This is, they laugh at you, man. <laughs> this, I'm not making this up. This is what they tell you. This they is... taped over it. This is some wild shit, man. I, well, I, mean, I, I, I honestly do. Like, I, I know I've said this a few times, but I'm telling you, uh, people are digging it. You really should look into doing a show. Um, I'm going to do a show. Yeah, you got it's it. It's going to be called BB. Hey, listen, this is very important, man. As far as the show goes, you want to see it live? You want to see it live? In September, anybody Southern California. And, and I hope Jim, my friend here, will... Uh, plug it when I know where it's going to be. I will absolutely, I will absolutely fucking plug it for you. It's going to be live, one man show, one night only. It's going to be called Beautiful, Brutal, The Ball, and everything in between. And it's going to be out of control because the audience is going to produce the fucking show. How you, how you like them bananas? I like those bananas very much. I think people, like I said, Ben, if people dig this kind of shit. Uh, you know, if you put yourself out there to watch. I'll plug the fuck out of that when you know the date. I, I will I will plug the fuck out of that thing. Yeah, you're my brother from another mother. I know you will. Hey, there you go. Well, uh, let me uh, – we'll, we'll wrap up a little bit here. Um, people, again, can follow you on Facebook at David Stay. Uh, they can follow you at your website at davidstay.com. Is there any other, yeah, social, to, any other yeah. social media, <laughs> any other sites that they, they can you direct them to? No. I'm not. I don't do Twitter. I don't do any of that shit. You're lucky I'm on Facebook. Uh, Facebook, uh, yeah, yeah, you want to wake up a little more? You think uh, fucking Mark Zuckerberg, guy in uh, college dorm, fucking made that shit? You're dumb as shit. <laughs> a lot of people fucking think college. that. A lot of people think that motherfucker's a robot. Like, no, no, no bullshit. Like, they think he's the way he acts around people. Like, he's so robotic. He doesn't seem human to people. Like, I've, I've heard that shit thrown out multiple times. Yeah, it's a possibility. Anything's possible, my friend. With everything that's going on, anything's possible. All right. But you got to understand, first of all, public knowledge, mind you, and I want to go back to the beginning. Don't believe a fucking word I say. Just prove me wrong, all right? Okay. Facebook was funded by the Central Intelligence Agency, all right? And if you think a guy and his buddy in a dorm room created that shit, again, you're dumb as shit. It's all set up to get all your, and then they got this fucking, you want to, they want you, you know, what was the thing where you get, send your DNA to find out your heritage? Dumb as shit. Now they're going to have your DNA. You're out your mind, man. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I always thought it was weird they had the mail-in DNA kits and shit, and everybody's been doing that, like the 23andMe stuff, the genealogy.com, all of yeah, that shit. Yeah, stop. stop it. Stop. You know who you are? You want to know who your ancestors were? I mean, who cares? You know you, which between your ears is who you are. Fuck's sake. I'm sending your DNA out. Well, David, yeah, David, well, I, I want I want to give you a chance to, uh, I, I I don't know, I mean, because we're kind of at the end here, hit the audience with something, man. What do you want to leave them with? You want to leave them on a positive note? You want to tell them to go check something out specifically? Like, how do you want to, how do you want to end this off? I'll leave you all with this. I'll leave you with a couple of uh, declarations I make. I make a lot of declarations. Declarations are important, all right, because of the vibration. You want positive vibration. I, I, I apologize for my uh, expletive, oh, but I, I don't consider them curse words. I consider them exclamation points, okay? It, it might be kind of immature to you guys, but that's fine. That's how I feel about them. They just pop out like a giant exclamation point, all right? So, one thing I live by is every day of my life is to touch, move, and inspire people. Everyone I fucking meet. If you don't see God in the next person you meet, you stop searching. All right? I'm a perfect mind. I'm a perfect body. I'm a perfect health. I'm a perfect soul. 
I will live to be a healthy 100 years old. The mantras I say every day. And if you don't understand vibration, do the right test. If you don't understand vibration, just do the right test. And you'll see that vibrations are real. Got to put out there. I know I come across freaking uh, kind of, you know, against the grain a little bit. But uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a man that just cares. And I care about everyone. And I want to make a hot damn difference on this hot damn planet. And it doesn't matter how many people. And that's my goal in life. So tomorrow, do the right thing. But just compliment somebody, man. You know what you can do? Just by standing in the elevator with a guy. Don't make it up. But if you're, even if you're a guy, yeah, he knows you're not gay. You know? But you say, man, you're sharp in that suit. You know what you just fucking did with a, half a breath? You lifted that man up. He might wear the same suit the next day. That's how you inspire people. That's where my power comes from, by the way. It's not tangible. It's not in my pocket. But if I inspire, I inspire someone tomorrow who is bummed out, and he gets in his car, and now he's happy, and he talks to his friend in Germany and picks him up, that's my fucking power. Understand? Vibration, man. And we got to turn this shit around, people, because you're, you're going to have children. What about your grandchildren? Where do you think the jobs are going to be in 20 years from now? You're, you're, you're headed for Babylon, man. So I hope I woke some of you up. I hope I entertained you, cats. I hope to do this again with you. Somebody even had a suggestion, Jim. We fucking watch the Sphere of the Lycan Club together. I'd, I'd be down for that. All right, you got to tell me tomorrow whether you're going to get it or not. Otherwise, you got to send you. Know, you got to give me another address, man. You got to see this shit after our conversation. I, I will definitely do a watch through with you, and we'll watch that together. That would be cool. That'd be a lot of fun. So, listen, guys, if you want the Sphere of the Lycan Club, I want you to go to davidstay.com. On the top left, you're going to Sphere of the Lycan Club. The very top of the page, you can see where you can get it. If you plug in in, in, in the notes, just plug in, uh, just plug in Medicare, whatever, and I'll send you a little extra present with it. If you want to read my book, Dare Hunter, which is absolutely brutal, I recommend you do not read it. It's horrific, okay? And it's funny, we should discuss this another time, but my next book coming out, which I'm almost done with, is the complete opposite. i got to change my freaking name. <laughs> anyway, listen, Jim, it was awesome hanging with you and all your fans, and uh, I hope I didn't offend too many people or blow too many minds. Oh, no, that's but, good. Uh, I, the chat fucking loved it, man. I, and I appreciate you coming on and giving us your time. Uh, if fans of the show, I think they you know, they enjoyed themselves today. Uh, hopefully, if they have an interest, that Sphere of the Lycanthrope, again, is up on your website, davidstay.com. And, yeah, yeah, we'll follow up. We'll do, like, a, a watching of uh, the Sphere of the Lycanthrope together. I think it'll be fun. That would be great. But you got to watch it first, though. Yeah, you yeah. got to shoot the shit about it off the air. And when you, know the, <laughs> when you know the date of the thing you're going to do, tell me, and I will promote it for you. Oh, you got it, my brother. All right, you take it easy. All right, good night, everybody. <laughs> All right, have a good one. Okay, chat, that was actor David Stay, who played Mandar on Photon.